Today I'm going to be talking about all the books I'm excited to read by the end of 2024. Typically I'll do two separate videos around this time of year. One will be my most anticipated releases for the rest of the year and one will be my end of year TBR. But I decided to just combine them this year. So in this video I'm going to be talking about some backlist books I want to read, some books that I just have little projects going on for that I want to read, some ARCs that I have, advanced reader copies that I need to make sure to get to on time, and then some anticipated releases that I have that I'm hoping to read by the end of the year. Altogether, I have a little under 20 books to talk about, so it should be very achievable to actually get through all of these by the end of the year, and I'm excited to have this little accountability moment so that I can go off and check these off my list as I finish out the rest of the year. First, I wanted to start by checking in on my video that I posted at the beginning of the year where I talked about the 10 back books I was hoping to read in 2024. I have read seven of those so far, so I only have three books left to read. Those include Night Film, Brother, and The Library at Mount Char. Night Film is a pretty long mystery book about an investigative journalist who is uncovering a murder and somehow stumbles into some cult horror film situation. I've heard really good things about this book. I've had it on my radar for years and I really want to get to it by the end of the year. Brother is a more disturbing horror book by Anya Alborn. I still have yet to read a book from Anya Alborn, so I'm making it a goal to read from Anya Alborn this year, and I'm gonna start with Brother because this is the one that I hear the most praise about. It's set in West Virginia, and it's following this guy who I think is a little bit different from the rest of his family who likes to engage in some dark behaviors. And then The Library at Mount Char is a fantasy sci-fi horror book that seems to be about some weird things going on in this library. There's a missing god, a library with secrets to the universe, and I've just heard this is really good and takes you on a really wild ride. I'm honestly so impressed with myself that I've been making my way through this list all year to the point that I only have three left, perfect for October, November, and December, so I should be able to knock all of those out with no problem. Next I want to talk about my ARCs. These are books that I think I got all of them through NetGalley from the publishers. I have ebook copies of them and I just want to make sure to read them in a timely manner so I can talk about them as they're coming out. The first one is actually already out. It came out at the end of September, but this is more of a wintry short story collection. So I think it's going to be really good to read like October, November, heading into December. It's called The Darkest Night and it includes 22 winter horror stories featuring authors like Josh Mallerman, Rachel Harrison, Christopher Golden, Tim Lebin, Nat Cassidy, Darcy Coates, Clay McLeod Chapman, tons of authors that I've read from before, but also plenty that I have not read from yet. It feels like it's been a bit since I've read a short story collection and there being 22 stories in this and it looks like it's about 320 pages long. It sounds like they really are pretty short stories. So that sounds like a fun time. I think it will be the perfect thing to get into the wintry season. Next up is Model Home by River Solomon. This is a queer horror story that actually came out at the beginning of October. So hopefully I can get to this pretty soon. It says River Solomon turns the haunted house story on its head, unearthing the dark legacies of segregation and racism in the suburban American South. Unbridled, raw and daring, Model Home is the story of secret histories uncovered and of a queer family battling for their right to live, grieve, and heal amid the terrors of contemporary American life. You're following three siblings who keep their distance from the lily white gated enclave outside Dallas where they grew up. When their family moved there, they were the only black family in the neighborhood. The neighbors acted nice enough, but right away bad things, scary things, strange and unexplainable things began to happen in their house. Maybe it was some cosmic trial, a demonic rite of passage into the upper middle class. Whatever it was, the Maxwells, steered by their formidable mother, stayed put, unwilling to abandon their home, terrors and trauma be damned. As adults, the siblings could finally get away from the horrors of home, leaving their parents all alone in the house. But when news of their parents' death arrives, Esri is forced to return to Texas with their sisters, Eve and Emmanuel, to reckon with their family's past and present and to find out what happened while they were away. It was not a natural death for their parents, but was it supernatural? Another one that came out at the beginning of October is the start of a new mystery series and it's called A Grim Reaper's Guide to Catching a Killer by Maxi Dara. This is said to be a cozy paranormal mystery and the cover of this one, the title of this one, absolutely pulled me in. Kathy Valence is 42, mid-divorce and pregnant with her ex's baby. She's also a modern day grim reaper employed by Scythe, secure collection, yielding, and transportation of human essences. But frankly, that's the easiest part of her life right now, or at least it was, until her latest client's soul goes missing. When she finally tracks down 17-year-old Connor Ortiz, he angrily denies he died of natural causes despite what his file says. He insists that someone at Scythe murdered him and he demands Kathy find out who and why. Kathy has only 40 days to figure out what happened to Connor and help him move on before the boy's soul is doomed to roam the earth as a ghost forever. She's forced to rely on the help of her retired mentor, 
her almost ex-husband, and some sneaky moves by Connor himself. This is the wildest case of her career, and one wrong move could cost Kathy her job, not to mention her life. The synopsis of this one also kind of reminds me of the book Sign Here, which was one of my favorite books that I read last year, so I feel like I'm really gonna enjoy this one. Coming out in mid-October is Curdle Creek by Yvonne Battle Felton. This is said to be for fans of The Lottery and The Hunger Games. It's a novel set in a small town with a sinister tradition that is chilling in the best possible way. Welcome to Curdle Creek, a place just dying to make you feel at home. Osira, a 45-year-old widow, is an obedient follower of the strict conventions and practices of Curdle Creek, an all-black town in rural America stuck in the past and governed by sinister rules and rituals practiced in the name of tradition. Considered blessed, Osira's luck changes when her children run off. She comes second in the running of the widows, and her father flees when his name is called in the annual moving on ceremony. Forced to jump into a well in a test of allegiance, Osira finds herself transported back in time, then into another realm where she must answer for crimes committed by Curdle Creek. Exile forces her to make another jump that lands Osira even farther away from home in a rural town in England. Safe as long as she sticks to the rules, she quickly learns there are consequences for every kindness. Will another jump lead Osira anywhere but back home? And then the last arc that I have that I want to read doesn't actually come out in the U.S. until January of 2025, but I feel like it's going to be a good, like, cozy kind of wintry read. And that is The Rainfall Market by Yu Young Guang, and Slin Young is the translator. This looks to be a cozy fantasy story. The synopsis says, if you could swap your life for a better one, which one would you choose? On the outskirts of Rainbow Town, there is an old abandoned house. They say that if you send a letter detailing your misfortunes there, you could receive a ticket. If you bring this ticket to the house on the first day of the rainy season, you'll be granted entrance into the mysterious Rainfall Market, where you can choose to completely change your life. No one is more surprised than Saren when she receives a ticket. Lonely and with no real prospects for a future, Saren ventures to the market, determined to create a better life for herself. There, she meets a magical cat companion named Isha, and they search through bookstores, perfumeries, and fantastical realms while Saren tries to determine what her perfect life will look like. The catch? Saren only has one week to find her happiness or be doomed to vanish into the market forever, and all the while, a shadow follows quietly behind them. This also says it's only 224 pages, so it also looks like a shorter story, and it just sounds like so many other stories that I've loved in the past. I have four other books on my radar that are not out yet that I do not have ARC copies for, so they are books that I will be hoping to get library copies of or even purchase and read them as soon as I can. The first one comes out October 8th, and that is The Last One at the Wedding by Jason Reculak. This is the same author as the book Hidden Pictures, which I did have a pretty good time with when I read that book. I know the end is a little, you know, contentious uh, amongst readers, but the actual experience of reading the book I had a good time with, so I'm interested in reading another story from him. This is a breathtaking work of suspense about a father trying to save his daughter from a life-altering decision that will put everything he loves on the line. Frank is shocked when his daughter Maggie calls him for the first time in three years. He was convinced their estrangement would become permanent. He's even more surprised when she invites him to her upcoming wedding in New Hampshire. Frank is ecstatic and determined to finally make things right. He arrives to find that the wedding is at a private estate, very secluded, very luxurious, very much out of his league. It seems that Maggie failed to mention that she's marrying Aiden Gardner, the son of a famous tech billionaire. Feeling desperately out of place, Frank focuses on reconnecting with Maggie and getting to know her new family, but it's difficult. Aiden is withdrawn and evasive. Maggie doesn't seem to have time for him, and he finds out that the locals are disturbingly hostile to the Gardners. Frank needs to know more about this family his daughter is marrying into, but if he pushes too hard, he could lose Maggie forever. An edge-of-your-seat thriller that delves deep into the heart of one family, The Last One at the Wedding is a work of brilliant suspense from a true modern master. The story doesn't sound overwhelmingly interesting to me, to be honest, but because Hidden Pictures also didn't sound that unique, but then it was kind of fun, I'm like, might be a kind of fun story too. In mid-October, we have a new novella coming from Nat Cassidy, who is the author of Nestlings and Mary, both of which I really enjoyed, and I love a novella. This one is called Rest Stop, and the description of it is very brief. It says, a young musician finds himself locked inside a gas station bathroom in the middle of the night by an unseen assailant, caught between the whores on the other side of the door, and the whores rapidly skittering down the walls inside. And that's all we get. And you know what? I don't need more. I trust Nat Cassidy. I'm excited to check it out. On October 22nd, we have another novella coming out. This one is the third in a series, sort of, I guess, a Christmas follow-up to Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone. This one is called Everyone This Christmas Has a Secret by Benjamin Stevenson. I have had a pretty good time with the first two books in the series, so I'm interested to see what a Christmas story looks like from this author. The mystery of this one is set backstage at the show of a world-famous magician whose benefactor has just been murdered. All of the suspects are professional tricksters, masters of the art of misdirection. You have the magician, the assistant, the executive, the hypnotist, the identical twin, the counselor, and the tech. 
It looks like it comes in right under 200 pages, so it should be another fun, quick read. I'm not usually one to pick up a Christmas mystery, so we'll see how it goes. And then the last book on my radar, I'm actually not sure if it came out in September or October, but it's coming out sometime around now, and that is An Academy for Liars by Alexis Henderson. This is a fantasy horror gothic story. This is the same author as The Year of the Witching and also House of Hunger. I did enjoy House of Hunger a bit more than The Year of the Witching, but in general, I've just enjoyed stuff from this author. So I haven't taken as close of a look at what this one is about. Honestly, I'm just like, yeah, I'll read another book from Alexis Henderson. This one looks to be a dark academia novel it says Lennon Carter's life is falling apart. Then she gets a mysterious phone call inviting her to take the entrance exam for Drayton College, a school of magic hidden in a secret pocket of Savannah. Lennon has been chosen because like everyone else at the school, she has the innate gift of persuasion, the ability to wield her will like a weapon, using it to control others and in rare cases, matter itself. After passing the test, Lennon begins to learn how to master her devastating and unsettling power. But despite persuasion's heavy toll on her body and mind, she is wholly captivated by her studies, by Drayton's lush moss-draped campus, and by her brilliant classmates. But even more captivating is her charismatic advisor, Dante, who both intimidates and enthralls her. As Lennon continues in her studies, her control grows, and she starts to uncover more about the secret world she has entered into, including the disquieting history of Drayton College and the way her mentor's tragic and violent past intertwines with it. She is increasingly disturbed by what she learns, for it seems that the ultimate test is to embrace the absolute power without succumbing to corruption and it's a test she's terrified she is going to fail. This one does look a little bit longer. It says 464 pages on Goodreads but it sounds like such a good fall read. And then lastly I'll just quickly run through all of the other books that I want to read by the end of the year for one reason or another. First up is the fourth book in the Thursday Murder Club series. I read this series this year. I've read the first three. I only have the fourth one to go and I just feel like wrapping this up by the end of the year. I do have the audiobook available and that is my favorite way to enjoy those stories. So I'm excited to listen to that one by the end of the year. I won't tell you about the synopsis of that book in itself because it is the fourth book in a series, but the series in general is about four older adults who live together in this community and they like to get together on Thursdays and try to solve murders. They're funny and heartwarming. There's also some sad moments in them and overall they're just a really fun mystery to follow. Richard Osman also has a new book coming out in a new series this year, the start of a new series. It's called We Solve Murders. I believe this one just came out in September and this one is following a new detective duo. The duo is Steve and his daughter-in-law, Amy. Steve is enjoying retired life. He does the odd bit of investigation work, but he prefers his familiar habits and routines. The pub quiz, his favorite bench, his cat waiting for him when he comes home, his days of adventure are over. Adrenaline is daughter-in-law Amy's business now. Amy thinks adrenaline is good for the soul. As a private security officer, she doesn't stay still long enough for habits or routines. She's currently on a remote island keeping world famous author Rosie D. Antonio alive, which was meant to be an easy job. Then a dead body, a bag of money, and a killer with their sights on Amy have her sending an SOS to the only person she trusts. A breakneck race around the world begins, but can Amy and Steve stay one step ahead of a lethal enemy? I don't think I've even given any of the Richard Osman books a five star yet, so I wouldn't say he's a favorite author in that sense, but I have enjoyed all of his stories. I feel like he's really dependable for just like a cozy, fun mystery that'll be a good time. So I'm excited to finish out the first series, at least what we have of it so far, and then start this new series by the end of the year. Speaking of mystery authors I really like, a real true favorite who does get five stars out of me is Janice Hallett, and she has a new book that came out at the end of the year as well called The Examiner. Like the rest of Janice Hallett's works, this is told in mixed media through emails, text messages, and essays. The story follows a group of students in an art master's program that goes dangerously awry. Six students, one murder, can you solve the crime? That's all I need to know from a Janice Hallett book. She writes incredible mysteries. I love the way she does it with mixed media and I'm really hoping I can check this out by the end of the year. Another mixed media mystery book I have on my radar is Murder in the Family by Kara Hunter. This one was pretty popular when it came out and I just have yet to get around to it. I actually started it like two months ago at one point and then I just wasn't ready for it at that time. I think it was coming off of reading a Janice Hallett book. So I was like, I want to put some distance between reading mixed media, murder mysteries, too close back to back. So now I'm ready for it. I'm hoping to get to it by the end of the year. This one says one body, six experts. Can you solve the case before they do? And I remember when I first started it, the inserts seem to be pretty dynamic. Like there's some pages that look like flyers or newspapers or website pages. 
there's interviews, voice memo recordings, all kinds of things. And that's what I love about a mixed media murder mystery is when it's all over the place and it really makes you feel like you're getting all these clues and putting it together yourself. So I think this will be a really good time. I'd also like to get to Night Bitch by Rachel Yoder. This has been on my shelves for years. I did try to read it once before and I just wasn't really getting into it, but there is a movie coming out that is an adaptation of the story with Amy Adams playing the main character. And this is a story about a mother who believes that she is turning into a dog. The trailer looks a little questionable and I've heard from people who have read the book and then watched the trailer that it looks like the movie might be taking a little sillier turn. I don't know, but I do wanna to try to read this before watching the movie because I just love to see the original source material and then watch the movie after. So I'm gonna give it another go by the end of the year and hopefully I have a better experience with it this time. And then finally, I have the last three books in the Throne of Glass series. I've been working through the Throne of Glass series in 2024, reading about a book a month, give or take. I'm currently reading Empire of Storms. I'm a couple hundred pages into this one. So this is my October book. And then I'm hoping to get through the final two in November and December. Now these are all longer books. So we'll see if I can do it. But I am going to be ambitious. And I'm certainly going to try because I'm just ready to see how the series all wraps up. It's been a little bit of a roller coaster journey. I'm not in love with the series, but I am committed at this point. So I really want to see how it ends. And I'm hoping that I can do that by the end of the year. So that's it for all the books I hope to read by the end of the year. Let me know down below what books are on your radar for the end of the year. Let me know if there's any upcoming releases that I should have on my radar if I didn't mention them already. But that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.